We greet the brethren who are present and the ones who are watching us through the net today, YouTube, with the peace of the Lord. A little low, isn't it? It's low. It's also very cold. Let's increase the volume. I don't know if only me who is feeling so cold. Peace of the Lord. Let's stand up. We're going to open our Bibles. In the book of Luke. Luke 2. You are going to begin reading from verse 8. From 8 to 14. Luke 8. Luke 2, 8 until 14. <laughs> she wants her own Bible. <laughs> uh, wow, that's her Bible. If we, if he turns later. Very well. Luke 2, 8 says the following. Now, there were in the same country, country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were glad greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be this sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in, in swad, swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly, the, suddenly there was, a, uh, was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Amen. The church may be seated. <coughs> My brethren, today, is for the Christian world the day that I could say the most important day because today it was chosen this day a day that was they, they chose so that we could say that Jesus was born on the 25th of December in the Christian world Christian world celebrates this day. It is a day that was set aside for the proclamation of the birth of the Son of God. But then you can say, I'm a Christian, but I don't celebrate Christmas. Christmas, Christmas for me has no worth. Jesus was born, and it is born, Jesus is born every day in my life, and that's all right. But if we ignore the birth of Jesus, we also need to cancel annul the entire Bible or cancel the entire project of God. Why do I say that? Because Jesus, when he comes to the world as a man, he needed to die in order for his blood to be shed because of man's sin. Because the Bible says that without bloodshedding, there is no remission of sin. So then, in order for Jesus to die, which is what we, we glorify the Lord for his death, not only for his death on the cross, but what is most important about the death of Jesus was was what? What? The resurrection of Jesus. And this for us 
is the most important of all. That's why I say the birth of Jesus is important because he needed to be born in order for him to die. Right? Nobody's born without having a birth first. Nobody dies. You need to be living in order to die. So the project of God also includes the birth of Jesus. Because here it takes place is the beginning takes place the beginning of the project on earth of what was the implementation of the project the physical project of God of salvation of man. We do not celebrate in the same way as the world celebrates when the commerce is the pagans or as the true Christians celebrate. Truly, Jesus was born and he is born every day in our hearts. But history has its importance. There's no way for us to ignore it. Jesus was not born. You know, he, yes, he was born. In the same way as we're born. So much that in the, the whole project of God, everything that the Lord has shown His Word through His prophets, everything has its place. Even we see here in the beginning of chapter 2, everything was established by God. Joseph and Mary, when Mary was pregnant, they had to walk all the way to Bethlehem. Why is that? Because the prophecy pointed out that Jesus needed to be born in Bethlehem. And for this, it was necessary. Uh, Caesar August, who was the Roman leader in Israel, to do something that had never, that had only been done once in the past. He made a decree, he signed a decree, and he said, everyone who have to go to their city where they were born to register in order to be able to pay taxes. If the decree was not signed, would not have been, would not make any sense for Joseph and Mary to, to walk 90, more than 90 kilometers in order to arrive in Bethlehem. So see how everything is connected. Caesar, August, he, he didn't just woke up in the morning and said, oh, let's put a decree here so that everybody goes to the city where they were born to register in order to be able to pay taxes. No. No, he didn't, ha didn't have this brilliant idea out of himself. It was the plan of God. And why is that? Because God was and is in control of all things. And imagine you, you, Joseph, and Mary, that one that was blessed, that Caesar, he wrote a decree, now, now we're going to have to go, go all the way to Bethlehem and to register. And, oh, there's no way. We need to go and go together. And then she went. Now imagine walking with a pregnant, a very pregnant wife, wife and travel like this. Imagine traveling by plane or car is already hard. Now imagine walking on the, the tracks. Now we can understand that everything has God's hand on it. Now we may be thinking, oh, my life is hard. Why is this happening, Lord? Why is this happening to me? But everything has a purpose. Sometimes we do not understand at the moment, but we know that everything is for our own good. The trials may come, the tribulations may come, but God has a purpose for all things. And if we will remain faithful to the Lord, we will understand what God has to teach us. So then, going back to the text here, we see that the birth of Jesus, Jesus' birth physically, like we are born, has its importance. Because everything is before Jesus and after Christ. It's like A.D. and D.C. 
So now if you sign a check uh, and put on the day 2022, it is because of Jesus, because of Jesus' birth. The commerce and religion, they brought it to a different uh, focus. They, they took advantage of a pagan feast and then chose that day. But what matters to us is that Jesus was born and the word of God was fulfilled. History shows this. And it was there in the same way as many were, were not paying attention to this. Many were not concentrating on this. And many religious of the time that heard the prophets, that would hear about the prophets, they were also not, not paying attention to what was happening. But the word says that there was a group of, of shepherds that were paying attention. And there is a group of shepherds that is taking care of its flock. And for them, for this group, an angel appeared. And this angel procla uh, proclaimed, and the angel told them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. So my brethren, the birth of Jesus is important to the entire people, to the entire humanity, in other words, not only for Israel, not only for the chosen people of God, but for the entire humanity. And why is that? Because the birth of Jesus brings good tidings, which is what? Which is gospel. The gospel speaks, uh, means good news. And for us, servant of God, we are living by the word. We give worth to what was left by God to us, which is his word. And in the same way that just a few pastors were there, shepherds were there, the entire Israel living their lives, the people living their lives normally under the Roman yoke without paying attention to what was about to happen or, or about what was already happening. And today, also there is a people that lives in the same way as those shepherds lived. You know, getting involved with the flock and getting involved with what is God's project, listening to the message, hearing the announcement, the proclamation of the angels, and hearing what God is saying to this small group. It's not a large group. It's not because the chosen are but a few. The Bible tells that to us, many are called, but few are chosen. And who are the ones who are chosen? Is the people from another church? No. Whatever there is a faithful one, whatever there is one who is serving God, whatever there is one who is listening to the voice of God, whatever there is one who is faithful, whether it is in North America, South America, Asia, Europe, Africa, whatever there is one, that is receiving the good tidings of God, yes, this one belongs to the faithful church. And it is independent of the name of the church or denomination. If he is receiving the glory of God, if he is seeing the, the brightness of God and receiving the message from God, this one is part of the faithful church. He is paying attention. He is vigilant. And while the world, while the Christian world is in this terrible situation and this failure, this bankruptcy, the Christian world is like this, but the one who is living by the word, the ones who are called the gospel, the ones who are living and giving worth to the good tidings, those are the ones who are paying attention. In the name of the Lord is being glorified. My brethren, the story of Jesus is very beautiful and is truthful. But the faithful church lives now a new moment, right? Jesus has already been born, 
He lived for 30, more than 30 years, and he died and resurrected, and now he is about to return. And this is the moment that we are waiting for. In the same way that the small group was waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus, we as well, who are part of the faithful church, we are waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus. We have a message. And this message is not only for us, but it's for the entire world. This message it encompasses the entire humanity. That's why the Lord is, is, is in haste to proclaim this. That's why the Lord is in haste to use His servants, whatever they might be, so that they may be an instrument on God's hands because we live by the Word. We cannot simply keep this for us. We have a treasure. We have a mystery. We have the revelation of the mystery. And this is Jesus that soon will return. My brethren, this story is very beautiful. It has its worth. But we have already gone beyond a story. We are already beyond the ladder. We live of a prophecy. We live waiting for this prophetic event, which is the return of the Lord Jesus. And that's what we need to give worth. When man gives worth to what is prophetic, Jesus is born on, on his heart every day. When man gives worth to eternity, what is the good tidings of God, he lives by the word. And in, he lives proclaiming the word. And one of the few prophecies there are still to be fulfilled, uh, very few that still need to be fulfilled, uh, is one of them is the return of the Lord Jesus. And the service to tonight for the children is wonderful. They are all happy. They got a gift. All of us, we got a gift. But beyond this, we have a commitment. We have something more to say. We have something more to, sh to offer the world, which is Jesus, which Jesus is returning. Get your life prepared, ready. God has something better for you. God has salvation for you. God has an eternity for you. God has salvation for your life, for your problems, through His Son, Jesus. And that's why, my brethren, tonight, you who is being invited for this Christmas, to this day, this special day, for the entire humanity, maybe for you, an alert, a warning, that Jesus was born, He died, but He's returning. And you need to get ready to meet with Jesus. Maybe you are living your life un unconcerned with your own commitments, being an honest per man, a good head of a household, sincere, taking care of your, your duty as a citizen. You pay your taxes, you work, you take care of your neighbor, you take care of the elderly, you do everything right. And that's good. This is our duty. But maybe you are not paying attention to one thing that the Word is speaking about, which is the return of the Lord Jesus. And that this day, may this day be like a warning, for awakening for that Jesus was really born. And the Bible says that He will return. If the Bible said that Jesus was born and nobody was expecting and He was born, and now the Bible is saying that He's returning, you need to be prepared with this. I need to be paying attention to this. I need the Holy Spirit to touch my heart and make me embrace this cause. And that's my that's that's why my brand may the Lord speak with you in a special way. And may the Holy Spirit touch your heart and cause you to understand what is the prophetic. What is the revelation of God? What is the Holy Spirit has used man to write here in this word, in the Bible, 
May the Holy Spirit now bring to you, inside of you, this understanding that you need to live for Jesus now. Live getting ready, which is something that only the Holy Spirit can do. No one can do this. No one else can do it. We could spend the whole night here preaching like we have for many years, every year, 2020. 2021, 2022, we can spend the entire year preaching. But, we, but the Holy Spirit is the only one necessary. You need to open up your heart and the Holy Spirit is going to touch you. And you will see that from that moment forward, from this touch, this spiritual touch of God in your life, you will begin now to give worth to the prophecy of God. Because that's the one that matters. That's one that matters. Amen. My brother, we are living in the moment called time uh, uh, soon. So every day we are expecting this day and it needs to be lived with vigilance in prayer and a life of sanctification in life of we're daily in the presence of God. Because if you do this, if we do this as a church, only then you will be included. You will be a part. This whole church of Pampana will be a part of the faithful church. And that's what matters to us. To be seen by God as faithful servant. Not a, a person that knows a, a history or no but as a servant of God, a man is, and a woman that live to please the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us. And we're going to sing a song. And you, at this moment, the moment in which you, in which you are singing the song, you, you will be speaking with the, with the Lord, placing God's author, your life. Today, we're coming to the end of yet another year. Do this in just a few minutes, uh, retrospective of your life, a balance of your life. Uh, what did I do in this year of 2022 for God? How is my life for God? Is it possible that I can be called by God as a faithful servant? Is God looking to me and being pleased with me? Is God looking at my actions and what I do? Am I living according to the word or simply preaching a word? You may be an excellent preacher, but you may be denying God's word in your life. So may all of us make an analysis and of what we have been before God and may God be pleased with us. Amen. Let's close our eyes and hear a song.
Amen. Let's stand up. We're going to have a word of adoration to the name of our God. For this word, Lord, that is worthy of our hearts. For the promise of the return of your Son, day every day, Lord, is warming up our hearts. For Holy Spirit has been sent, Lord. We pray for Manatha will be fulfilled. This is the desire of the faith of church. If you have sustained us, have pro we can say that we love you because you loved us first. Blessed be your name in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord to Jesus. My brother, also we, was, we were praying for the service. The Lord has shown that many times we find ourselves to to think that we are right in everything that we do in our actions and many times we think we are but we are not uh, we make many mistakes as well but we need to admit our mistakes and to look to the Lord it is not worth for you to be flailing and in your internal struggle but man, man is flawed. We make mistakes. We are sinners by nature. No one can say, oh, I don't sin. Oh, no. The moment you say that, you already sinned. Man is flawed. That's why Jesus had to come to the world in order to change our <coughs> destination. Because the wage of Sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. If it was not for the Lord Jesus to die and, and be born and died and resurrected, none of this would exist. There would be no word or gospel. We would not be here. And this is a fact. But now, for us, in order for us to be seen by God, as faithful servant, we need to leave off of the Word. We need to accept Jesus as the Savior of our lives. This is God's project. Man will only go to heaven if he accepts Jesus for what Jesus has done for us. Not because of what we do. Not because of what we do right. Because no one goes to heaven out of their own merit. We go to heaven because Jesus overcame death for us. And this cannot be contested. There's no way from, from a force to run away from it. Man will only have his eternity if he accepts Jesus as the Savior of his life. So this is, it doesn't exist to say, like, I'm good. Uh, today I'm better than tomorrow, than yesterday, and tomorrow will be even better. I'm uh, in a high plane of goodness. It, this doesn't exist. You may be good, and it's your obligation to be good. To be honest, it's your, it's our obligation. Uh, in uh, the society, in in the world, we need to be like this, better people than we are. But in order to go to heaven. We need to accept Jesus. And the Lord also has shown another sister who is here. She entered here in the church, church tonight and she had an experience with the Lord Jesus. She already had an experience of salvation in Jesus. But now, and she kept this. Oh, I'm going to put this on the side. I don't want to be seen as a daughter of, of God, a servant of God. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to live my life. But the Lord is showing tonight that tonight is a moment for you to return. The Lord is showing here for you who have, li have lived a life, a, a full life in fullness that has experienced a genuine gospel that had heard the voice of God and be able to obey God's voice. It is time for you to return. And when the Lord shows, it is because He sees tomorrow. 
and the enemy of our souls. He's paying attention. Isn't it true? The enemy is around us, worrying as a lion because he wants to prevent your fellowship with God. But look, do not waste this opportunity. The Lord is showing you need to return to God's arms, to the saves of, to the arms of your Savior. It is not tomorrow; it's today. Man, let's pray, bringing the service to a close. And you, at this moment, as we are praying here, need to place your life still in God's altar and say, Lord, this gift, the Holy Spirit, is testifying that it's me. This also happened to me in the past. You will speak with the Lord like this. And I need to have strength to return. I need to have the strength to obey your voice. And you need my burden. Nobody does it in a reckless way. Man can only return, only turns to God's presence, only begins to hear the voice of God if it is through the Spirit. And tonight is, is the proper moment for this, that God is speaking with you. So take advantage. Embrace this and say, Lord, I need to return to your arms. Amen. Let's pray, bring in service to close. Lord, receive our adoration to you. This service that was all established in heaven and now it was presented to us, Lord, through the spiritual gifts, through what we have done here, which is expressing our gratitude to you, our praise to you. Lord, we ask that we receive this service as a sweet smell, as an offering to you, Lord, and that you may turn into blessings to each one of us, to our family members, to our health, to our work. We ask that you may continue to open doors, Lord, closing the mouth of the enemy and giving us victory and that in every morning we may be under your hands. And that at every instant, Lord, we may have fellowship with you. And that we may run away from what the enemy has placed on our path ahead of us as obstacles. And that we may overcome everything in the name of Jesus. Take us home in peace and give us a week in fact, the last week of this year, we ask that you may give us victories upon victories. We pray to you, already thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation and the gift of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren may be seated. If anyone desires um, an assistance, uh, short assistance, we are here at your disposal. The pastors, deacons, ushers can raise your hand. Or someone might raise your hand on your behalf. And we are available to pray for you and to help you in whatever is necessary. I'd like to remind the brethren that this is the last week of the year, and on third, first, Saturday night, we're not going to have service in the Church of Pompano. We're going to have in Hollandale. I can't. This light has... We are going to provide, because the church has a dress. <laughs> we can do this. We can show this. And the bread, pay attention, because on Wednesday, we are going to have, here it is. See? Here it is, the address of the church. The bread want to copy or take a picture. So on the 31st, at 10, 
30, we will all be there in the Church of Hollandale for our last service of the year, special moment. The Lord has a message to all of us, a blessing to all of us. So you may invite your family members, your friends. There is a lot of space there. So it's a very spacious church. So surely it's going to be more comfortable for for us to answer our needs a little better. And on Wednesday, we're going to have a special service for everyone who has activity in the church. Praise group, the women, the ones who do the cleaning of the church. So if you have any activity, we're going to be at 8 at 9. Pastor, I don't want to have a, an activity. I don't have an, any role, but I want to have. So come. In the future, we'll have a role in the church. Uh, teacher, uh, deacon, praise group. I don't have anything now. I don't do anything now, but I don't want to have. But you, So then you can come because you don't have any role, but you pray for the church. Do you pray for the church? So you are an intercessor. You pray for the church. So you have a role for the church. Amen. Amen. Anything else? Amen. Peace of the Lord. We're not going to have the service on on Tuesday for to via Zoom. The service of answering the question because the question that we're asked today will only be answered on the eighth. So we'll we'll be in the seminar. So we are going to have the the meeting is going to be on the Tuesday. We're going to have the the next Tuesday. So allow the brethren to set a little time aside for the Wednesday. So pray for the seminar, six, seven, and eight. Amen. Peace of the Lord. Thank you.